Hello and welcome to another Vox Commando tutorial. Today I'd like to introduce you to uh, maps. This is a new feature that we've added at, as a version 1.13. And basically they're called maps because we're mapping a value onto a name. It's very similar to uh, Payload XML where you map a phrase to a value but the purpose of this is more for uh, working in macros and um, it allows you to work with a friendly name for whatever uh, data you're sending so if you need to send an infrared code that's a string of meaningless characters you assign it a name the name is called the key and using the key, we have access to the value, which would be the, the string of meaningless or seemingly meaningless characters. So if we look in our uh, file menu now, we have this item here, Open Map Editor. And we're shipping Vox Cometa with just some sample maps. If you happen to have a global cache, uh, iTac or similar device that that can broadcast infrared signals. Then I've got a few sample maps here. For example, uh, if you have a Samsung TV, these codes may work for you. But the idea is that the, the global cache codes that we need to use in our macros don't look like anything that a human can really understand. So we would prefer to be able to use uh, friendly word like this and you'll be able to create your own tables and put your own codes in there and then when you want to use them you just drag from this column into your command as you're building it so I'll open the editor and I'll just create a new map test Save this, and I'll just create a, a command to show you how this works. You can also open the map editor from within the uh, command builder by clicking here. It's, it opens exactly the same window, it's just uh, for the convenience of being able to... Um, you might want to go and inspect your maps when you're not actually in the editor, so I added it here as well. Um, so in order to show you the basic function, I won't actually um, use my iTac, but I will show you uh, using an on-screen display. Now, if I wanted to show the code for power, I would drag Pardon me. I would drag from here into my field. So now you see that when you're editing commands, you can see exactly uh, what code we're using. We're using the code for the Samsung and the code is power. And similarly, if we wanted to use menu, drag that one in. Now, what if I click Save and Execute, what we're going to see is this value up here. And these work like any other uh, variable, sort of system variable in Vox, in that if you wanted to, you could say, you could um, include other text in there. So you could be you could you could be building a web address or something like this, and you'll see that it's just substituting what's in the curly brackets is being converted to the code. If you want to create your own table, you can go to this menu. Not everything here has been implemented yet. For example, I've got sort of placeholders for being able to import and export. I haven't implemented that yet. We are able to copy and paste rows, uh, both from one table 
uh, map table to another, but also between Excel and uh, or from Notepad into the editor. And I'll show you that later. But I can create a new map table, call it test, and then you can start putting in values. So let's say, for example, I was using home automation controller and my rooms had different ID numbers. So I could start putting in here, kitchen is room one, uh, office is room two. This is sort of how the Vera Lite works in terms of rooms. Uh, living etc. So this is saved. And here if I pull in living room, and I can add some extra text, the code is. So now we should see the code is three in quotes because that's the ID for the living room. When I test it, the code is three. So this, uh, these maps can also be used for uh, storing values as in as variables maybe you want to keep track of um, the which lights are on in your house if you're using some other controller an a RF controller or an infrared controller and you want Vox to remember which lights are on and which are off for example you could have these values stored here The living room light here we can say the light and we can manipulate these values in actions as well obviously so when you give the command to turn the light on you obviously need to be able to set the value so we have some commands here under map uh, you can create a table you can delete a table you can get a value and you can set a value now get a value don't technically need because you can get a value using this format however you may have reasons uh, perhaps you want to access this from your python code or something so we do have an action to get a value but i'm going to use map set this allows us to uh, change these values for a particular key in a particular table so I will, rather than filling it in here, I'm going to go to the parameter helper so that you can see the values better. So here, the name of the table that we want to use is test. The key that we want to use, and I'm going to actually, um, well, I won't copy paste because I would have to close this window. <laughs> but let's say we will set this to um, on. And the overwrite variable is it's a true or false. It's optional. If you don't specify it, then values will be overwritten. So um, the idea is you may want to set a value only if the, if the key does not already exist. Uh, in this case, we want to set we want to keep setting the same key to different values depending on whether the light is on or off. So we'll leave it at the default, which is that it will overwrite. And I will, just to be sure, I'm going to copy and paste here. And I believe the table name is not case sensitive, but just to be safe, I will make sure that it matches because here we have it all in caps. All right, I'm going to actually um, do a little trick here. I'll clone this. Sorry. I'll set light on. Set light off. And So this will set 
set the light on. We're talking about the living room light. This one, we will set this value to off. And the check light status will be the one that shows us. So we can set it on. We can check the status is on. We can set the light off and then check the status. The light is off. Now, we already have variables in Voss Commando that we could use, but the problem with the variables is that they disappear as soon as Vox Commando is closed. So the beauty of the maps is that if you need to restart Vox for some reason, it will still remember the status of the light is off. So I think that's enough for you to digest at the moment. The only other thing I will point out is that, uh, as I said, and as you've seen, we do ship Vox with a few uh, example codes. And the files that are included here, I'm going to browse to the VC folder. These, these uh, map tables are stored in the data folder. And when you first install Vox, you'll have this uh, sample database. It's an SQLite database. And you can directly edit this if you want. If you have uh, uh, any software that can open SQLite databases, I'm using SQLite Spy, which is free. You can go in and look at your uh, your tables and the values that they have. When you first run Vox Commando, it'll check to see if you have a maps file. And if you don't have a maps file, then it'll, it'll make a copy of sample. And the reason that we do it this way is that later when you upgrade Vox Commando to a new version, we don't want to overwrite your existing maps file. So uh, rest assured that you can make all the changes you want to your maps and when you update Vox Commando those changes will not be lost even if we've included a new sample file. I guess one other thing I'd like to show you is uh, a little bit about how you can copy and paste values. So I'll open up the map editor again and I'll create a new map. Actually no, I'll just, I'll just select our test map. And let's say we wanted to edit these values in Excel because it's easier to work with. So I can uh, hit Control C, actually. And I can run Excel. And I can paste my values here. doesn't really make sense in the context of <laughs> on and off, but these these might be, again, uh, ID numbers, right? For a uh, home automation controller. So now I can copy these. You can copy um, any number of rows, but you need to copy two columns, and you need to have the key on the left and the value on the right. So I will hit control C to copy this. And now I can go here. Actually, I need to go to the edit menu and say paste rows. And if you wanted to use something other than Excel, you could, for example, use um, notepad. What and I'll paste this in here. The way that it separates the columns is with the tab key. So you could add here another, um, I'll say, um, mm, 
tab six. Um, entrance tab seven. Uh, notepad is not great because you can't actually see the di whether it's a tab or spaces, but you can tell uh, when I move the cursor around that it's a tab because if it were a space, it wouldn't jump across like that. Uh, I can copy all this again now and paste. So perhaps someone will list some codes on the forum uh, in a forum post in this format using uh, carriage returns and tabs, then you can copy this from a forum post and use this edit paste rows method. Another thing to know, and if you're a programmer, you'll already know this, but the idea here is that a key must be unique. Uh, you can have the same key in different tables, but within a single table, you must have uh, only one of each key. So if I try to, to enter entrance here again, uh, it won't let me leave this field because I have a duplicate value, duplicate key. You can have uh, multiple keys that have the same value, that's not a problem. But when you uh, specify, when you specify map test entrance to, uh, it needs to be able to go and find the exact key and know that it's returning a value not have to guess which key you were intending to use. So it will force, uh, it will enforce what we call referential integrity. And I think that is enough for this lesson. I hope that you find this useful and uh, that you find interesting ways to work with it. And hopefully we'll in the future be able to share codes for different devices and different controllers. Thanks for watching.